Hi, this is Professor Laws, and I'm going to give you an overview of this study that was published in JAMA Online on March 13th. So this is just an overview of this one particular study, but it's pretty fascinating. So it was published March 13th. I hope what this quick video will do will encourage you to pull the actual article and read it yourself. I mean, this is real life, real time, evidence-based medicine. So we're looking at what are the risk factors associated with ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, and death in patients who have coronavirus disease 2019, COVID-19, that developed pneumonia in Wuhan, China. So in order to be in this study, you had to be in Wuhan, China, in a specific hospital. You had pneumonia that was positive for COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2. Okay, remember SARS-CoV-2 is one of the seven viruses in the coronavirus family, one of the three particularly nasty ones. Now let's look at the progression of COVID-19. This is why we're so interested to know who's most likely to suffer the most severe consequences from COVID-19. Now the progression has been for this study, what they observed in their patients was patients may or may not have dyspnea. That's pretty interesting to me. Dyspnea is difficulty with breathing. Next up, they would develop hypoxemia, low oxygen in their blood. Then that led to ARDS, A-R-D-S, end organ failure and death. Now, sometimes um, patients, just because you developed ARDS did not mean it absolutely had to die. Some patients were able to get off the ventilator, but I'm just talking about worst case scenario that this ends in death. I also am aware there's a lot of debate about ARDS. Are these patients really in ARDS? Well, for the sake of this discussion, we're gonna run with this study, but stay tuned. This is April 2020, and we may learn, I hope we do, so much more about this virus and how it attacks the body as time progresses. So again, stay tuned. Keep in mind, this is one study from Wuhan, China, the starting place of all of this. And we're going to talk about what happened to those patients. So who was studied? Well, there was 201 total patients because um, it was only patients in this hospital in Wuhan. You see a picture of it there and in Wuhan, China. And it, they were admitted from Christmas Day 2019 to January 26, 2020. So that's what defined 201 patients. And they had to be confirmed COVID-19 pneumonia. OK, so that's who we're talking about. So is this generalizable? That's the whole point of research. We'll need more studies. We need more information. We need more data. But let's dig in and see what they found with this particular patient population. The median age and gender is 51. So we know median age is 51, and there was predominantly more men than there were women. I don't have any comments for you on that. It just is what it is. There was 63-ish percent men, 36-ish percent women. Now, as age... Older age is a risk factor. I don't think anyone is arguing about that. Young people can develop this. Young people can die from COVID-19, but predominantly the highest risk population are those that are older. And their study throws out some theories as to why. I made some pictures for you from their results to kind of make things a little easier to visualize. Now we know that we have 201 total patients because we just looked at patients at one hospital in Wuhan, China, and they looked back at their records. Okay, so it went from Christmas Day to January 26, 2020, and they had to have COVID-19 pneumonia. That's where the 201 patients came from. Now, of these 201 patients, 84 of them developed ARDS. Okay, so of the 201 patients, look, it's less than half, but that's still a pretty high number. 84 of them developed ARDS. Now, of this 84, right, of these 84 that developed ARDS, 44 of them died. So they went through that worst case scenario. So 201 patients admitted with COVID-19 pneumonia. Of those 201, 84 of those patients developed ARDS. Of those 84, 44 patients died. Now, dyspnea, that difficulty with breathing, this represents those who presented with dyspnea. Now, on this long box here, you see of the 201, 80 
presented with dyspnea. Okay, so we know that 84 of the 201 developed ARDS. So only 59.5 or almost 60% of those who developed ARDS presented with dyspnea. Of those who did not develop ARDS, you see 117 here. Remember, 84 plus 117 equals 201. So of the 117 that didn't develop ARDS, about a quarter of them presented with dyspnea. So if you present with dyspnea, it's not a guarantee that you're going to develop ARDS, but it does increase your likelihood of having ARDS. Okay, so this would be something clinically that we would keep an eye out for and watch. Now with ARDS patients, they found that they, in this study, they had comorbidities, which are similar to findings in other anecdotal research. So the comorbidities are like chronic diseases like hypertension or diabetes. Older age, really can't argue with that. These patients um, usually are of older age. Again, that's not exclusive, but it does significantly increase your risk to be of older age. Neutrophilia plays a role, and that's your immune system response. But also, you've got organ coagulation dysfunction, so they've got higher lactate levels or D-dimer levels. So, this snapshot right here, that gives you four kind of areas to be considering with COVID-19 patients. Do they have other comorbidities? What is their age? What is their white cell looking at? So CBC is going to be really important. And also, what about lactate or D-dimer levels? Well, let's look at neutrophils in SARS-CoV and MERS. Now, remember, seven members of the coronavirus family, four of them, not a big deal, three of them, super ugly. SARS-CoV, SARS-CoV-2, and MERS are super ugly. So if we're talking about the white cells in SARS-CoV and MERS, the earlier ones, neutrophilia was both in the peripheral blood and the lung of patients with SARS-CoV. Okay, so check. They had more white cells. Now with MERS, uh, it, they even found a, the severity of the lung damage correlated with extensive pulmonary infiltration of neutrophils and macrophages. And they had higher numbers of these cells in the peripheral blood too. So both SARS-CoV and MERS had higher white cells. Now please don't be offended, but I just threw this in here. If nothing else, you can celebrate that you know there are five different types of white blood cells, right? There's monocytes, lymphocytes, neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. So enjoy the hard work that you've learned these before you came to this video to watch it. But I wanted to remind you that not all white cells are elevated at the same time, right? That would be severe dehydration. But we're talking about elevated neutrophils in SARS-CoV and MERS. Remember, that's neutrophilic leukocytosis. That's why we call it neutrophilia, because they're telling us in neutrophilia, it's the neutrophils that are elevated. So let's look at these neutrophils. I mean, they're the main source of chemokines and cytokines. So why do we care about cytokines? Well, that can cause ARDS, right? So if I have a cytokine storm, that can lead to ARDS, which is a leading cause of death. I know there's a lot of debate about that right now, but just roll with it for now. They did find that in patients with Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and SARS, okay, severe acute respiratory syndrome. So with the earlier two nasty viruses, SARS-CoV and MERS, they did find that the cytokine storm led to ARDS, so they're looking for similarities and differences between COVID-19 and SARS and MERS. Now in this study, the patients with COVID-19 pneumonia who developed ARDS, so be clear who we're talking about, patients with COVID-19 who had developed ARDS also had neutrophilia. They had significantly higher neutrophil counts than the patients who didn't have ARDS. Okay, so let's play that out. What's the deal? We know that was a problem with SARS and MERS. Now we're seeing this in COVID-19 patients. So the theory is maybe when these neutrophils are being activated because it's a response to the virus, that's a good thing, but it also causes a cytokine storm, which we know can lead to ARDS. That's the thinking behind ARDS. Again, I know that will be a debate that will go on for a long time, but I want you to consider for now, 
This was a problem with SARS-CoV. It's also a problem with MERS. And they're thinking there's a clear link in COVID-19 pneumonia. Now we're talking about all these cells. We'd be amiss if we didn't look at T cells. Ooh, stay with me. There's a lot of information here. Now in this study, the patients had higher CD3 and CD4 T cell counts. They thought that might protect them from developing ARDS, but they didn't really notice that when they examined death. So that may be a problem with the smaller sample size, so can't really put a lot of weight in that. However, CD8 counts were significantly higher in those who were alive. So this may mean that CD4 and CD8 T cells have a really important role in COVID-19. Now notice I said it might mean that. We don't know yet, but these will be more areas for us to dig in and look. Now, when talking about studies with SARS-CoV, um, it had the same cell enter receptors with SARS-CoV-2. That's cool. They found that they found that similarity between SARS-CoV and SARS-CoV-2 and how it can affect immune cells, including T lymphocytes, monocytes, and macrophages. So this is a lot of to be continued. And if we thought we were done, no, no, I've got more information for you. So keep in mind the CD3, CD4, and CD8 T cell counts decreased at the onset of the illness. Now they stayed lower until the recovery period of SARS-CoV pneumonia. The CD4 and CD8 T cell counts decreased in the peripheral blood specimen of patients with fatal SARS-CoV. Remember that was earlier. And that was consistent with patients with COVID-19 pneumonia and ARDS, and they had lymphocytopenia of the CD3, CD4, and CD8 T cells. So the biggest takeaway point here is, wow, they're really breaking this down to the similarities and differences, and we'll be able to treat coronavirus much more effectively in the future. So studies have shown that T cell responses can inhibit the overactivation of innate immunity. Maybe we can help manage that cytokine storm. Let's look at C, uh, T cells in SARS-CoV-2. Now the T cells, um, they think help clear SARS-CoV and a suboptimal T cell response caused some pathological changes in mice. So file that away for watch more, more follow-up, but here's what it all boils down to. Here is the hypothesis of the researchers. Persistent and gradual increases in lymphocyte responses might be required for effective immunity against SARS-CoV-2. That's what we care about. So they're hypothesizing that persistent and gradual increases in lymphocyte responses might be what we need for effective immunity against SARS-CoV-2. Now we need more studies, as every research study always says, further studies are needed to figure out the role of the neutrophil and the lymphocyte response and that of CD4 and CD8 T cell responses in response to SARS-CoV-2. So there you have it. That's an overview of the breakdown of this particular research study.